So your pet just died and you are searching YouTube to figure out a way to cope. Well, today I'm gonna to share with you three things that your pet on the other side wants you to know. Hi, my name is Danielle McKinnon. I am an animal communicator. That means I connect with animals that have crossed over as well as animals that are living through my intuition. Um, this YouTube channel, all of my YouTube videos are really dedicated to helping people who are uh, going through the grieving process. One of the things that I've noticed recently as I cannot keep up with the number of um, comments, but so many of the comments are, my dog just died three hours ago. My cat died this morning, two days ago, that kind of thing. And, I, and I'm looking for help. I'm trying to figure out what do I do? What can I how can I fix this, 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 these horrible feelings that I have? And um, I'm not going to tell you how to fix because we all need to go through the grieving process. That's a very natural thing. But I am going to share with you three things that um, the animals have shown me that may help you adjust to the loss of your pet a little more easily. Okay, to start, the first thing I want to share with you has to do with the number one question I'm asked in my comments in my YouTube videos. Uh, when an animal has crossed over, most people are writing, I hope he knew how much I loved him. I hope she knew how big my love for her was. Um, and I think that question comes from the fact that we, as humans, we want to have closure. We want to have that last moment. We want to be able to say all those things that maybe we didn't say. And um, so we, as humans, we like that. That helps us feel good. Animals don't actually need that. They don't need that type of closure because they're connected with us at a much deeper level. They don't just base their knowing of us and who we are and what our intentions are on our behaviors. They don't go, oh, she came home late. She doesn't love me. What they actually do is they're so connected with us at the deepest level, what I call the soul level, that they really know who we are. They know how we really feel. They know what our intentions are. They know when we're flubbing up. They know all of this. What they want from us is the relationship that we have along the way, is that we're as present as we can be. Your animal knew how you really felt, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. So even the times when you got mad at your animal because he did X, you know, he knows about that too. <laughs> but they also are able to see the real true good in all of us. So you can trust that your animal really um, tapped into you and knew the whole deal. There's another challenge that comes up, and this is based on what I see on my YouTube channel, around the grieving process. The grieving process is huge. When you lose someone who you dearly loved, it hurts. When you lose someone who you trusted like no one else, it hurts even more. And when that someone is an animal, uh, to me, from what I see, that's, that's the hardest. And I know it sounds crazy that I'm saying that losing this beloved animal can be the hardest, but when you lose your mom or your dad or a beloved family member, there are grief counseling services, there are cards, there are all types of situational, there's just a lot of help out there for that. But when you lose a beloved animal, there are people out there who do not understand that this is it for you, that this is hurting you like no one has ever hurt you before the loss of this animal. I remember when we had to euthanize one of my dogs and I was devastated. I, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink, I couldn't get out of bed. I was just so upset. I took three days off from my corporate job. This is a long time ago because now I do this work, but um, I came back to work and my boss looked at me with her arms crossed and she said, I feel like you took advantage of me. And I mean, at the time I could barely even speak. I really shouldn't have been back at work. I wasn't functioning. And what it helped me realize is that there are safe places to share what's going on, to find support. And there are other places and other people where it's not safe. And I learned, okay, 
my boss, not a safe person. Other people who feel about animals the way that I do, these are safe people. That's actually why I started my Be Open community because I wanted to kind of gather all those people together who didn't think I was crazy at being devastated at the passing of my dog. So one of the things that's going to help you, and this is one of the things that the animals are always telling me to tell their humans, is finding support in the places where you will really feel supported. And that may mean the places that a lot of people are recommending to you or the things or that what people want you to read for books, that kind of stuff may not actually work. And that's okay. I did recently read a um, an Instagram comment from, I think she was like 14, I don't know. And she said, my, my cat died and my parents think that I'm just uh, wallowing and being lazy, but I'm really devastated. It happens a lot where people in your family don't understand, your animals want you to find other people who do understand. There's one more thing that, uh, that comes up a lot in my YouTube channel and that people want to know when they've just lost their pet. Um, they they want to know how can I hear from my pet again? How can I feel connected to her again? What can I do? You know, what happens now, basically? Um, and I have a lot of videos on how to get a message from your pet, but I'm just going to talk here for a moment about the place that you're in right now. If you're watching this because your pet just passed, I want you to understand that this is a little bit of a wonky place. This is a, a kind of a, like an interim in between place when an animal crosses over. There is a, a period of time where that animal spirit needs to adjust to not having a physical body anymore. So there's this time of, wow, I feel even more distanced. I feel even weirder about this. I feel even worse about this. That period of time could be three hours. It could be a few days, but there's this, it's kind of a nice thing as well because the animal's off kind of going, all right, I got to adjust to not having a body. got to figure this out. How am I going to function? What do I do? How, how's this all work? At the same time, you're going through your, I've got to adjust to not having the animal around. This feels really terrible. I, I'm not enjoying this. And so you kind of both end up being a little bit more separated while the adjustment happens. As that animal adjusts to being on the other side, the animal becomes able to show up to give you messages. You can watch some of my other videos about that, about how those messages come through. But it takes on your side, you kind of moving through your grieving process a little bit as well. So while that animal has to go through, I call it animal spirit school. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it really is, but they're, where they're adjusting, you also need to move forward in your grief. That doesn't mean stop grieving. But if you're in a place where um, you can't breathe, you're not eating, that kind of thing. And so these are often natural parts of, of grief. If you're in that place, it's going to be a little harder, actually a lot harder for your animal to, to come through and, and give you a message, give you a sign, show up for you. Um, so there's unfortunately, a little bit of patience. And your animals want you to know that they're not pushing you to grieve faster, move through this, figure it out and be okay. Your animals know that there is a natural process here and there are things that you can learn from their passing as well. So as you're kind of looking around and learning about this and, and coming to terms with your own feelings and emotions, that's what they want you to do is, is be conscious about it. As you're doing that, the more you do of that, the more it opens things up so that when your pet is finished with Animal Spirit School, they can come and give you a message and give you a sign. I also have a video on reincarnation. You might want to check that one out next. Sending you my love.